Okay, so originally I was going to make one really long video uh, that I was going to cover several political topics, but I decided not to make it as one long video, and so I'm going to make it four smaller videos, which I'm going to try and upload over the next month or so, mainly because I've been having some issues with my laptop lately, and I don't want to have to try and deal with the video editing software to try and uh, edit several videos of me talking for like five, ten minutes into one video. Plus, I'm recording this on my cell phone, so if it looks like I'm talking at a weird angle, it's because I'm trying to look straight ahead, but the cell phone's a little bit below me. So, yeah, I'm just, like I said, this is just going to be a quick 5-10 minute video, just me talking about a political subject. I'm going to do this for the next three videos as well. So, yeah, just going to keep this one short with the introduction. So, uh, back in the early days of Democratic primaries, I did a couple of videos talking about uh, both, basically my personal opinions on which candidates I felt were the best, and in no particular order, the, my top five were Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Julian Castro, Andrew Yang, and Tulsi Gabbard. But obviously, none of them became the nominee, or the vice presidential nominee, Joe Biden did. And he picked uh, uh, Kamala Harris as his VP. And overall, and this is something I'll get into in a different video, a little bit more detail, but for the most part, I mean... I like Joe Biden. He wasn't in my top five, obviously, but I mean, I still feel at this point Biden at his best would still be better than, uh, sorry, Biden at his worst is better than Trump at his best. And I think four years of Biden won't fix everything that Trump did, but it'd be better Biden trying to spend four years trying to fix what Trump did in his term rather than another four years of what Trump, if, uh, given what we've seen in his track record for his first term for him again, a second term. But back during the primaries, in one of those really big videos I did, I uh, had, uh, hold on, this uh, uh, map of the United States. And basically what I said at the time was, if the election were held at that point, which I think was either January or February of this year, because it was like still early on in the primaries, I basically said, if the election were held then, without knowing who the Democratic nominee was going to be, because we still had over two dozen Democrats running at that point, I said, at the time, 13 states in D.C., or 182 electoral votes would go to the Democrat, regardless of who the nominee is. 19 states and 121 electoral votes would go to the nom Republican nominee, no matter who it is. And the remaining 18 states and 235 electoral votes, I said it was too soon to know who the nominee was going to be, or who, or who they would go to without knowing who the Democratic nominee and vice presidential nom nominee was. And originally I wanted to uh, do this video after Biden became the nominee, but I thought, well, let's wait until after we know who his VP pick is and who and the conventions. So that way we're about two months out rather than, like, say, four or five months out. So that way you can get a little bit more accurate with, at least, uh, based on more on, uh, more, I guess, accurate polls, which now it's two months till the election day. Whereas then, like I said, it was four or five months till election day. So I basically uh, have finally updated the map. So like I said, this was the original version. And this is my updated version. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer for a moment. Uh, so it can be easier said. Or seen, excuse me. So according to my prediction, if the election were held today, two months out from election day, if, if it was, uh, like I said, at this point, now there are a lot of issues, which I'll get to in a minute. I think this is how it would go. Biden wins 24 states and D.C. And he gets 294 electoral votes. Trump gets 26 states and 244 electoral votes. So Biden wins by a 24 vote majority, or it's, no, 25 vote, because, no, it's 270. So yeah, 24 vote majority, because you need 270 votes to win the presidency. So, like I said, this is just based on current polls, looking at all swing states, and, uh, and yeah, this is what I personally feel. Now, I'm going to zoom back out. So, there are some issues that have come up since I did this, where I did the video with the first map, and this is the same one I did, like, for, like back at the beginning of the year, this is the same map, I just held on to it solely for this video. Anyway, but yeah, so, uh, there have been some issues that have come up since I did that first video. Uh, we've had some issues with the post office, uh, there w I mean, there's more than likely going to be foreign interference again in the election, I mean, and, uh, also, uh, there's the whole issue of, uh, the coronavirus pandemic, how it's going to... We don't know exactly how it's going to affect voter turnout for sure. But like I said, if just all things being equal, just everyone who is willing to vote goes out and votes or is able to mail in their vote, no issues whatsoever, 
And like I said, it was held today. Today is uh, September 4th. If the election were held today, Biden wins a narrow majority of the Electoral College. Like, And it's even a smaller margin than uh, Trump won over Clinton. He had like 306, 308. Here, Biden wins, but he doesn't even get 300 electoral votes. But I think this is how it would go if the election were held today. So pretty much almost every of the state of the blue wall, basically Biden wins back, the ones that Clinton lost. Uh, the South say it's solid red. As much as I really w want Texas to go blue, I still don't think at this time it would. Pretty much the coast right here stays the same. Some people think Arizona might go blue. Like I said, I think it just barely would stay red. The two states, though, I, and uh, most of the East Coast stays blue. The two states, though, uh, I'm probably most split on, but I made ultimately my decision were Ohio and North Carolina. Now, North Carolina, I'll, go, I'll talk about that one first. North Carolina is worth uh, 15 electoral votes. Now, it went for Obama in 2008, it went for Romney in 2012, and it went for Trump in 2016. But I honestly think this time, looking at polls in North Carolina, Nor uh, Trump is not doing so well there. So I think it'll probably be the state with one of the closest margins, like probably like a 1% difference or so. But I think Biden is just barely going to win North Carolina. But even without North Carolina, he still would win the presidency, because again, he would have 294. Without North Carolina, he would still win, but it would be just barely enough of a win. The other state that I also want to talk about is Ohio. Now, Ohio did vote for Obama in 2008 and 2012, but it voted for Trump in 2016. And, of course, there were some issues with Ohio voting for Bush back in 04. But... I feel Ohio, if the election were held today, would go for Trump. But again, it would be barely. Like these are like the two states, like I'm the I was the most split on trying to figure out where they would go. But here's the thing. Since I believe the 1960s, every single uh, in every single election, whoever won Ohio won the presidency. I have Trump winning Ohio, but I don't have him winning the presidency. But again, like I said, I was split on Ohio. There's a chance Biden could win it. Because it is like, and it's like I said, it's like the one key state in like the so-called Midwest Blue Wall. The Democrats normally win, no problem. I still think might just barely go red. But like I said, we're two months out, so this is just my personal opinion. I'm zoom back in a little of how I think the election were to go if it were held today. Now, again, this is all personal opinion, but it is based on what I've looked at at polls from like all these states, as well as based on the last couple presidential elections, and uh. And since we know who Biden's VP is, Kamala Harris, a uh, black woman from the uh, West Coast, or, yeah, West Coast, Biden, Northeast, and uh, looking at the demographics, also certain states. Like I said, I honestly think Texas still might go red this time. Florida, because Trump basically moved there from New York to Florida to basically avoid paying taxes and try to avoid the lawsuits he's got going on there, I think he'll help uh, boost uh, his approval and the voter turnout in Florida a bit. Now, I'm, I might do one more updated map, maybe like a week or so before the election, but like I said, if it were held today, I'm fairly confident this is how it would go. Biden wins, but just barely. So, like I said, I'm not a political expert. I'm not a professional analyst of politics. This is just based on what I'm looking at and what I personally think, just based on the past few elections. So, we still have the, the, the debates to get to, and I will say this, and I'll end the video with this. Biden and Trump Neither of them are an expert debater. Biden, when he's one-on-one -on -one with people, like in a conversation, he does very well. But when it comes to debates, Biden's never been the strongest debater. I mean, when he ran in both 88 and 08, he was out fairly early because he wasn't the strongest debater. And even in the primaries, he wasn't necessarily the strongest debater on a lot of issues. I mean, one of my personal favorite moments was when Julian Castro basically called out... Uh, Joe Biden, and yes, Cory Booker, I think, did this a debate or two before, saying you try to take credit for the good things Obama did, but you don't want to take any responsibility for the bad things he did. And, but yeah, so like I said, Biden one-on-one -on -one is pretty good in debates, so it will be interesting to see him go up against Trump. Now, Trump, he is good at, like, a, like individual attacks, and he's good at, like, basically mudslinging his opponent, but he's not necessarily good at debating his opponent. Like, if you rewatch the three debates he had with Clinton... He was good at attacking her, but he wasn't good at necessarily debating her or answering questions from the moderators. And I think that was one reason why... I'm going to put this down. So, I think that was one reason why he, like, was really 
Like, he did something different by attacking, but he didn't really answer questions in the debate. So it will be interesting to see if that tactic actually works again this time when he's up against Biden. Because, again, he's the incumbent this time. So it will be interesting to see if he does the same strategy, or lack thereof, in just attacking Biden. Which, even then, most of his attacks against Biden aren't really working as well as attacks against Clinton. And while Biden was never my first choice, if it comes down to it, I'd rather us have four years of basically a moderate Democrat than another four years of this right-wing extremist nut job in the White House. See, that's my opinions. Uh, if you feel like uh, sharing your opinions in the comments below, I'd really appreciate it. But please like this video and subscribe if you already haven't, and I'll get back to you with another video hopefully in a week or so. All right, take care.